Hello viewers, it's Super GT here once again with Stock Car Challenge number three. So thank you to all of you who commented on another car to use. Some of you did vote for this one, the Honda NSX 1992 in B class. So this is a 508 rated car in uh, stock form, and this is the design here. If you want, uh, if you want to use that one, so there is a Takata Dome NSX. So here we are in the lobby. Our car is 508 rated, everyone else is using a 600 rated car, so a deficit of 92, quite a big gap between my car and their car, so they really should be beating me. Now there's no Alpha 33s in this class, and no Honda NSX, uh, Honda S2000s that anyone is using, which is the most dominant car in this class I believe. So, just going to see how many of these guys I can beat, uh, the people I do beat, well shame on you. As we go into the first turn at Rio, one of the most carnage filled circuits there is. I let these guys go past me, there's no point fighting because look at that, they've already crashed. And as we come round the first bend, that guy's gone flying over a couple of times. He's probably dead now. As we come into the hairpin, the guy in the BMW has gone a little bit wide. We've got a ghosted Jaguar there. Coming into turn number three, I'm going to go a little bit too wide here. The car sort of just didn't really want to respond to my input at all. But we haven't been uh, overtaken, luckily. Got a bit of a gap behind us as we approach the chicane section here in 11th position, which is pretty good considering we did go down to 20th momentarily. So, coming up the hill, this tricky little right hander here. I'm going to make contact with the Supra just about. Luckily, he managed to keep it going, uh, facing forwards as we come into. This is a really hard corner to judge the braking zone for. He goes over the bump there, goes into the wall, goes for the wall ride um, attempt there, and he actually pulls it off quite nicely. So I'm going to do the cutback, not quite on the Supra, as we come up the hill past uh, Christ the Redeemer there. I'm going to look around the outside of the Supra into the next corner. Uh, got almost ahead, but he uh, gets late on the brakes, looking for the cutback, but he just cuts me off at the last moment, fairly. So I'm going to stay in ninth for now. I've got a Lotus on my back here. A Lotus that should be very quick around this kind of track. A very tr uh, twisty, uh, twisty circuit. As you come down here through the chicane. Make contact with the wall. The Lotus does very well to avoid me there. So well done to him for doing that. He's through into ninth. I'm still in the top ten. They make contact. The Supra has made contact. Bouncing off the wall. I'm through. Back into ninth. As we approach the left-hander before the tunnel. So we've got um, some smoke there from that guy. That's another position for free. As we come through the tunnel, the Punto there is going to make contact with the Jaguar. Come across, I'm going to just about go around the outside of him. That's a free position into seventh. So that uh, first lap so far is going pretty darn well. The first four have broken away quite a, quite a, by quite a margin. So it looks unlikely that I'm going to be able to catch those. But the Jaguar there just going straight onto the wall. A couple, of, uh, a couple more guys are there. Not breaking in time at all. That is a wall that seems to... Um, Rio's um, tax bill must be quite high because that wall got, has got to be prepared on a daily basis with all these um, noobs going into it. And I almost shat myself when I went through that car. I thought I was going to crash into it. So we're going to fast forward to the end of lap two. Nothing happened on that second lap. I was in a safe sixth. And we're going to cross the line to finish in 6th position, beating 11 people who unfortunately will have to snap their disc in the coming days. Hopefully now, they should just do it now um, to put themselves out of their misery. So we're going to move forward to the second race. We are at Lime Rock Park, third on the grid, so quite high up. And off the line, I've got a good um, launch actually in this car. Uh, looking up the inside there um, is the Mercedes, so I'm going to move to the inside to cover him off. And he can't go past me there. He's going to almost swipe me there. Very close to hitting the back of me. Fortunately, he doesn't. The Sylvia in front of me, a French Sylvia, has been passed by the EMW guy in the Chevy Nova, I believe. I'm probably wrong on that, as I always am on my American muscle cars. Coming through number turn number three, the right-hander. Um, comfortably in third, actually. We do have an Abar 500 on our tail. So, you have to keep it nice and tidy. But it's looking pretty good, lads, as it stands. As we uh, uh, go up the hill, over the crest, into the chicane layout of Lime Rock Park. Late on the brakes, 
Go wide initially before cutting back for a late apex. Some tyres there on the apex as we come into the final turn. So as you turn there, um, at the bottom of the hill, the car compresses. It gives you more grip and you actually turn a lot better. So we're in a comfortable third here. The guy in second certainly has the legs on me up the straight. There's no chance of me competing with him. Although I did actually uh, pull away slightly from the guy behind, which is encouraging in a stock car. Let's not forget, guys, I am in a stock car here, and I'm putting up a more than a good fight. If this car was fully tuned, I should I'll almost only be winning this. But this is actually a really good, fun challenge to try and do. Uh, the Abarth actually popping onto the bottom of my screen there for a moment. So he's actually uh, waiting to try and get past me. I'm not going to be flustered by that. I'm just going to try and stay ahead. Um, there's no point in making a mistake. Just uh, stick to your guns. Hopefully he'll be the one to make the mistake. Although hopefully the mistake isn't going flying to the back of me. The Sylvie is going to go very wide over the grass. And I get the momentum on him as we enter the final turn. So I'm through into second. This is quite incredible in a stock NSX. So we're going to look behind. The Sylvie is going to get the run on me. He did on the last lap. So I'm going to move to the inside to cover him off. He's going to have to go the long way round. So he's going to go for a late lunge. And that is too late. He's going to go off onto the grass. And I forced him into a mistake. He should have just been a bit more patient. But again, um, patience isn't something you see in Forza. So that plays into my hands very nicely. I've got a bit of a gap now to the guys behind. They're coming through turn number three. Get on the curb with two wheels before using the throttle to get out onto the exit there. And we are going to fast forward here to lap number five. Not much happened after that. It was pretty much a safe race. The leader there, as you can see, had a bit of a coming together with the Blue Jaguar, who's been a bit of a menace in this lobby. As he goes into the final turn there, he's going to push him out of the way. And I was always worried here because I I know that the uh, Jaguar is going to switch his attention to me. So I'm going to pull my trick on him. I'm going to go, pretend to go to one side and pull across to the other as he attempts to ram me off. So that is not going to work on me today. There are the results, second position in a stock car, very nice work. And we are going to move to my bonus clip of the day. This isn't going to be a full race, just the first lap. Road America short version, I think it's the West version. So off the line we go, didn't get a good launch this time. There are guys battling already at the back. I can see a lot of tyre smoke as we come through the first bend. We've already got contact, but this is Forza 6. It is quite a contrast after playing iRacing to see the amount of contact. That guy's round. And look ahead here. We've got two guys on the right-hand side. That guy's gone flipping over about six times. He's died as well, just like the guy in Rio. And this Jaguar, once again, he's going to collect me. He's an absolute menace in this lobby. Coming back onto the track. Oh, my God. More carnage. Keep it together, guys. Come on. Just for two seconds. Just try not to hit each other. But this guy here is going to try and turn on me, in on me in the BMW. Although that is a typical BMW driver move. If anyone drives in the UK, we all know that BMW drivers do like to pull in. Sorry if you do drive a BMW. But I'd recommend um, using your indicators more often. And not pulling into the tiniest gaps. Or tailgating. As it seems to be my common experience with BMW drivers. As we progress here. I'm in the top 10 here. Going past a Lotus. Or the Alpha, sorry, as we go into the right-hander. He's going to cut across the grass and wipe me out. Although I'm going to do the sickest 90-degree entry um, drift there through the kink. And keep it together somehow. I'm not sure how I did that. Coming through the dog leg left as we go into the carousel. This guy's going to let me pass. Uh, not much happens here. Then later on, on the start of the second lap, I went wide. And then I just sort of gave up. Just couldn't be bothered with it anymore. So I just quit the race there. And that is going to be the end of this video, guys. Remember to suggest more stock cars that you want me to drive. I hope you have enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts on this car, on the races that I just had. And I hope you can like the video if you did like it. Subscribe if you want to see more of the same. And I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.